welcome to what I call comic spot and what you call, oh God, not her again. Another interview, what in the hell? Yeah, it's me. Hi, I love to do things that are quirky. Um, that's like drive you crazy when you're at home probably wearing your pants. So here I am. Sit back, relax, you know. Don't don't bother telling us in the chat anything because uh, I won't look until after. So just enjoy what we're saying. I talk to my guests as if I was sitting in a coffee shop and John Greco, my guest, sat down next to me and we had a conversation. It's just what would happen in real life. I don't really know him. We talked yesterday when he interviewed me. Now I get to I get to have my revenge and interview him. <laughs> revenge. I don't know if I would call it revenge. You were hitting on our engineer, so I couldn't see him. There was nothing to turn me off. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And trust me, if you saw him, you know, you would have been turned off very quick. You might have even turned off the Zoom meeting. But, <laughs> you know, fortunately, he's got a flyer he can put up instead of his bald head and everything works out perfectly. So, you know, everything was good to go last night. I had a lot of fun talking to you. You would never guess this, but this is actually this woman is actually related to Albert Einstein. I don't know if you've shared that on your show, but she told me last night that was her grandmother, <laughs> which is something yeah. that probably actually makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> no, but it's it's great to be it's great to be here. I'm happy to be talking to you again. So thank you for having me. Absolutely, John Barreco. Let me read the intro. After first, I have to talk about my sponsor. I have one sponsor, and I have to make sure to mention her. It's ahabroadway.org. So if you're a comedian, an improver, an actor, and you want to take it to the next level, go to ahabroadway.org. They offer $10 classes to veterans. They have classes for seniors and children, and they're doing a bang-up job and the class, comedy classes are being taught by Chris Murphy. He's a big time guy out on the East Coast. So get a hold of AHA Broadway. There you go. Thank you for being a sponsor, making all this possible. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, King for a Day is John Brecco in the other square. Yeah, lifeguard. I did like a curtsy. I'm a little bit big, so you couldn't see the whole thing, but. <laughs> the intro he gave me is that it reads like this. My guest today is a man, so we now know his pronoun, of many hats. Barely. <laughs> He's a man of many hats. He's not wearing one right now, though. A radio show host, a stand up comedian. A full lifetime guard, like full time lifeguard during the day, full time lifeguard during the day, just in case his dreams never work out. Sounds like <laughs> Superman. It's a mild mannered, mild mannered lifeguard during the day, ladies and. I don't know about mild mannered. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, John Brecco is here on the show today. John, how are you? I'm great. I just got off of work. Thankfully, I didn't have to do the show in my car this time because you know this last night I had to do that in my car, you know, and it almost didn't happen because we got Zoom links mixed up. She sent hers thinking I was doing her show all of a sudden and I had to clarify, no, this is my show, which, you know, considering this is a woman that said Albert Einstein was her grandmother, this should also make a lot of sense. So, you know, but no, I had a lot of fun last night and, you know, once again, I'm happy to be here and congrats. You got a sponsor. I didn't even know that, you know, you know, for a lady that's been through, you know, all the things that you have and mixes up, you know, simple Zoom links and stuff like that. I'm actually amazed you remember sponsors and other interviews and all this kind of stuff. But, you know. You know, I'm then, but I mean, 
I don't I don't want to I don't want to say like I'm serious because I feel like that's not the thing to say right now but you know you you're really doing a lot and it's amazing. Thank you. Oh my gosh. You know, when anybody starts to roast me, I just put on this fake sweet smile so that they feel tempted not to continue. <laughs> Sometimes it works. <laughs> Eh, I mean, normally a smile to me means, you know, you're laughing, you enjoy it. You know, that's what I look for when I'm doing stand up. You know, I'm, I'm looking for I'm looking for the people that, you know, are either smiling or groaning or just reacting. You know, I'm not looking for the people that, you know, just have this resting face to me unless they're in the front. Then why the hell are you sitting in the front? You know, you, sh you like should know a little this. better. I yeah, no, I've had up front like this. <laughs> Yeah, I've had people like that. They'll put their hands on their hip, hands on the table. And, you know, that that's that's when you have to point out their poker face. You know, how they're just looking at you like it's hilarious. Just, you know. One day I was doing a show here in Vegas, and there was a lady that was white, and she was with a guy who was black, and she had dreads, a white lady with long dreads. And I said, oh my gosh, you guys, we have a celebrity. We've got, um, what is the lady's name? That one that that lied and said she was black and that she made it to the top. Rachel Dolezal is here. That's her name? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was so funny, you know, that it came to my mind and I could come up with it. Right. She didn't laugh, so nobody else laughed. And that made it funnier to me. <laughs> I, I mean, I think we're so used to, you know, I think everybody who's been doing this for a while has offended a crowd at least once. They may not have said anything to you, but I think we've all done it and we've all gotten used to the feeling like, does this crowd like me? Are they enjoying what I'm saying right now? But, yeah. you know, you got to power through your jokes. So, you know, you go through it anyway and you just kind of, learn to embrace the fact that yeah this crowd doesn't really like me and you know you get through your jokes you get through your set and you laugh at the fact that you just offended an entire room of people but i mean that's the way it goes sometimes crowds are really hit and miss and you know every time you get on stage it's hit and miss because you never know the kind of crowd you're gonna get you just hope to get a crowd that you know is gonna be a bunch of good sports and are gonna you know, realize it's a comedy show and not take themselves so seriously and just sit back and enjoy it. Exactly. What's some of the best and the worst that you've encountered as far, without saying names of comics or, or clubs or whatever, just like I remember a bar fight that I still laugh about. I, I, gotta, I gotta be honest, this is actually one of the best shows I've done like the crowd was the crowd was super super nice you know they stayed and talked to me after the show i actually couldn't get out of there for almost four hours and i had work the next morning and i was like oh god this is gonna be awful <laughs> going into amazon tomorrow so but i stayed i had a lot of fun you know again all of them were really nice but there was this one guy who I almost got into a bar fight with because he thought I was making fun of his friend and he didn't realize we were we were joking around. So and he was a little bit intoxicated. So, you know, he came up to me, started talking a bunch of smack. And at first I thought he was kidding. But then I see the look on his face that he's dead serious. So, you know, I, I start to straighten up a little bit and I'm like, if this is going to happen, this is going to happen. But you know, thankfully, his buddy stepped in. He told him, like, hey, we were just joking. It's fine. And, you know, I act. we actually ended up getting kicked out. It was me and a friend who came with me. And my friend got so drunk, he started, you know, almost fighting somebody over a pool game because they were playing the two different sets of pool rules. And they were both getting confused. And he was so drunk, he almost fought this guy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> What are some really good things that have happened when you've done comedy? Some good things that have happened, you know, I mean, what I just look for, you know, people that, you know, have enjoyed their night, enjoyed my set. And if I have one person or one group of people that really enjoyed it and had a fun night, then, 
you know, it's worth it to me. You know, I already said this, but you're not going to make every person happy. Some people aren't going to like what you have to say. They're going to find a reason to be offended. And, you know, that's not the pe- that's not the kind of people I look to entertain. And, you know, so for me, just in general, you know, when somebody comes up to me, you know, tells me good job, you know, wants to give me a hug or just talk to me after the show, you know, those are the things I kind of enjoy the most. I mean, that's not really an answer to the question, but I mean, that's really the most important thing for me. You know, I just, I I look to bring a smile to somebody's face and, you know, make their night great. Or, you know, if they've had a shitty day, just a little bit better. That's wonderful. What a great, that's a great goal. You'll never fail at that. Never. Even (laughs) Einstein knew that. (laughs) Yeah, right. It's 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 a perfect goal for a millennial to have. It suits me, don't you think? Yeah, it's so millennial. I'll you. never fail at it. Never. <laughs> yeah, I should just give you a participation ribbon for trying. Well, just give me some milk to go with it, and we're good. <laughs> you know, boomers. Let's talk about that. Boomers always crap on the millennials, and I'm sick of it because you know. We did all kinds of things that were like participation, you know, like, what do you call it when you get engaged and you take a a ring that is the emblem of eternity and you haven't even been in the sack with the guy yet to know if you're sexually, you know, on the same boat. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think the best thing you could do and, you know, you know, my girlfriend, she edits a lot of your shows. You drive her absolutely nuts. Thank you. But, she's so fun. <laughs> oh, no, she's great. But, you know, but, you know, there's a lot of people that would probably look at our relationship and are like, oh, my God, you guys live together. You're sexually active. You're not even married. And, you know, she has she has a she has a brother who, you know, has two kids with this girl and they're engaged and you know they're a very happy family just the same and i think the best thing you could do relationship wise is really get to know the person and how can you do that without living together finding out you know if there's chemistry in the bedroom especially and you know just being able to be there for each other when you have to put up with each other every single day and You know, I think a lot of people, you know, even now forget how important that is because it's so she drives me nuts, too. It's not just you doing it to her. You know, she she does. She does it to other people. You know, you're not alone in this. It's okay. (laughs) I'm glad. I'm so glad. So what's the best part of being with Abby, the lady who puts my YouTube videos up? She is my rock. She has the patience of an absolute saint, which is why she keeps putting your videos up. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, just I can talk to Abby for hours about anything, you know, whether it's serious or ridiculous. And, you know, it's just fun. I don't have to worry you know, about being self-conscious around her at any point. And, you know, she doesn't have to worry about the same thing with me and she knows it. So, you know, that's what, you know, the best part about being with Abby is, and you're going to like this. Do you actually, has Abby ever told you how we met? No, I want to hear this. Okay. So I was in another relationship before her. And, you know, we were engaged and my ex-fiance wanted to take engagement pictures and Abby was the photographer. Ah, and something developed. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) nothing, nothing then. We ended up breaking up like six months later and then, you know, about six, seven months after that, me and Abby started talking. I was joking with another comedian when I brought this up, but, you know... She mentioned how her boyfriend slid into her DMs. I'm like, I did the same thing. She just <laughs> slid into my comments first. We we kind of we we kind of both just slid into each other's DMs. You know, I don't know. I don't know if you're following still, but 
Yes, I'm using my Einstein powers. Okay. <laughs> you, fi you, you, figured, you figured some things out. You moved past the head trauma and we got this. You do I it every day for the sponsorship. Treat it like it's a sponsorship. Isn't it funny to have brain trauma? I mean, it brings down any house. <laughs> I mean, don't all comedians have some sort of head trauma going on? Isn't that why we get on stage? <laughs> I know every baby boomer was probably dropped on their head and licked lead paint. Oh, yeah. So, and you, you, know, you know, you know, want to know what's funny? I The place I lifeguard at is actually at a gym. And most of the clientele there is retired and old. So... <laughs> You know, I try to figure out who are the ones that got dropped on their head. And usually when they speak to me, <laughs> I can figure it out. Some take a little bit longer, but, you know, usually when they start speaking, I'm like, oh, God. And that's when I know. <laughs> I love when I do a real brain injured thing. Like, you know, like with Abby, I send her so much money a month to do so many interviews, putting yeah. them up. And I'm like, okay, so where are we at? How many we got left? How, when do I have to pay you again? Like for Abby. <laughs> but I do that everywhere. Like I'll get, I'll go to a cash register to pay $3.12 for a cup of coffee, which I think is stupid. Make it $3. But no, it's $3.12. I give them a five. That's stupid. They're, they're giving me a dollar something back, and I'm arguing with them. Like I think I gave them a twenty. Obviously, I didn't. You know, like oh, sorry, brain injury card. <laughs> that's that's when you that's when you just flash it out to people like it's AARP. <laughs> I've had oh, people man. tell me not to come back to their place of business. I had a whole town mad at me and not want me in their in their businesses. Oh my God, that actually sounds awful for you. So, you know, I'm I'm sorry for your loss when it comes to all the coffee places that kicked you out. <laughs> so, talk to me about who you were growing up. Like, I, I'm guessing you were never shy. Am I right? Uh, I mean, not exactly. I mean, when I was bullied a lot as a kid, so. You know, when I got to middle school, I kind of receded into my shell quite a bit. And then, you know, I started going to a different school, made, you know, new different friends for high school. And, you know, it wasn't easy, but eventually I started to come out of my shell then. And college allowed me to do more of the same. And it also allowed me to, you know, find things that, I was passionate about and, you know, things that I wanted to do with my life that I wanted to talk to people about. So, you know, when it came to high school, it, you know, gave me friends. It gave me confidence when it came to college. It gave me direction and it made me an even better person. And then afterward, you know, these are pretty general answers, but, you it's know, afterward, cracking, you know, it's just cracking me up because. In my mind, I'm thinking, what would Martin Short do right now if he was in his character of Jiminy Glick? <laughs> it makes sense. But, you know, and afterward, you know, I didn't realize how much I was going to have to struggle trying to get into radio. And, you know, when I decided I wanted to do comedy, you know, comedy, I mean, I understood it was going to be, you know, a long time before anything significant was going to happen. But, you know, comedy, I was a little bit more in it for the long haul. But, you know, I look at things now and, you know, some of the places I've worked at, some of the places I've got to perform at and, you know, everything I've had to go through has, for better or for worse, has made me uh, not only the stronger person mentally, but a gentler, more understanding person in the long run. And, you know, I don't think I was really able to say these things about myself until this year when you know i finally left amazon went to you know my first full-time radio job which ended up being an absolute disaster and got this job as a lifeguard now i'm looking to you know become a swim teacher you know i'm working for a startup station that you know has a real young owner who's a guy who's really really driven and 
you know, I'm happy I took the road less traveled at this moment. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, not only the things I'm going to do with comedy, but, you know, whoever I can help, you know, teach swimming, whoever wants to talk sports with me, you know, on the sports station I work at now. And, you know, I do a lot of things that I never saw myself doing, but, you know, you can't become better without change. So, you know, I can talk sports as good as a man. Oh, yeah. Abby tried to impress me when we started talking about saying that she knows who the quarterback is. (laughs) And that's about as far as she got with impressing me. So, (laughs) oh, my gosh, I was once. I once dated an NFL quarterback. Okay. With two CTE and two Super Bowl rings. I believe it, especially the CTEs. He spent eight hours with me and he was a running back and he decided to go running back for more concussions. I, th- I thought you said he was a quarterback, first of all. I lied. Brain injury card. <laughs> AARP right here. He has to be a running back for the joke to work. (laughs) Okay, you just forgot he had to be a running back. Hold on. I got to ask you something. I know it's your interview, but I got to ask you this. Have you ever done that with a joke on stage? I have to know. Okay. I have lost more audiences. Oh, my gosh. You think you're talking about something and it makes... It's coming out of your mouth and you know you're so confident and you have lost them because you're 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 not making any sense at all. I've done it. I so mean, much. I've I've done this without brain injuries, so <laughs> you know, i I I wouldn't even worry about it. I just try to acknowledge how stupid I just sounded and move on. Usually you start to lose people after like the second or third time you mess up, but <laughs> you know, the fir- the first time you can get away with it. So it's not like you've lost the crowd. I still think that people would much rather talk to me than Einstein. (laughs) I don't know what Einstein was like, so I couldn't say. But I will say this. If that was really your grandmother, then he invented a lot more things than we thought he did. (laughs) So that that may or may not be true. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So you started in the comedy. Tell everybody everywhere you've done comedy in your career. Oh, man. There's a lot of different places, most of them in New York. But, you know, Broadway Comedy Club is the place where I produce a lot of shows now, place that I really enjoy being. She loves you, Al Martin, just so you know. Yeah, I love Al Martin. She wanted to let you know that. Is Um, he still married or something? (laughs) Yeah, unfortunately for you, but I, I was going to say that's 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 one guy who you have to be a little bit more subtle when you hit on him. So I'm not I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying be subtle. You know, don't 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 let his wife catch you. But yeah, no, Broadway Comedy Club is great. You know, <laughs> Greenwich Village Comedy Club, of course, you know, and all the places over there, you know, including the Grizzly Pear. Um, Stand Up New York is a really, really fun place out in the city. Let's see. I know there's others. Um, St. Mark's Comedy Club is one I performed at recently. That's a little bit like a smaller of a room, but, you know, it's very cozy. The crowd's intimate. It's a lot of fun. You know, Governor's Comedy Club in Rhode Island. Coasters is a really fun bar to perform at over there. Um couple places in Connecticut you know I've done comics roadhouse up there you know I've done you know a couple shows out in West Haven the elbow room a lot is a lot of fun too out in Connecticut I forget exactly where that is but and there's also a really small room that's called BPT creates they do a lot of different things including comedy out in Bridgeport Bridgeport is fun because I can go back and forth to Bridgeport in a night I can do that with Southern Connecticut living in New Jersey I can't do that you know, with the shows that are a little bit farther up north. But I I mean, that's just that's just some of them. I can name more Comedy Cove in New Jersey for one Stress Factory. I mean, I want to travel more than I've really been able to in the past. And that just comes down to finances. But, you know, I want to travel to a lot of different states because, you know, in one way, this pandemic has been a blessing because I've really gotten to meet a lot of people, not 
just all over the country, but the world. So, you know, states like Florida, Indiana, Idaho, states I forgot even existed. And, you know, of course, L.A., Arizona, those places as well. And there's probably a bunch that I'm missing that would take me a while to think about and make me look like I have a brain injury. But, <laughs> you know, I really I really want it. That's one of the things I want to do. I want to travel, you know, to a lot of different places than I've really had the chance to. And whenever that comes, you know, I'm excited for it. So when you were growing up, did you get in trouble for being funny? Because yeah. you were relatively young. So I have to oh, ask. Yeah. You did. Yeah. No. So did that make you stop being funny? No. No. I mean, I think, you know, when you're young and you get in trouble for being funny and making jokes with your friends, you know, you just kind of look to see if there are teachers around after that, or at least that's what I did. So, you know, and, and eventually I'd miss one or two and I'd get in trouble anyway, but you know, it never, it never stopped me from being funny. It, it never stopped the hijinks. It never stopped the shenanigans, but you know, I was going to have fun pretty much regardless of what, you know, was going to happen. And, you know, I became the person who I am today for it now that I look back at, you know, all the times I got in trouble, all the times, you know, I made a joke or two, all the jokes that I got away with. What made but, you do comedy in the first place other than being funny? Okay. <laughs> so I'm actually kind of glad you asked this, but <laughs> Good. You know, there was, there was somebody that I was friends with that used to write stories and I looked at, you know, a notebook that she had one night, you know, cause you know, she showed, she showed me a couple stories in the past, but I started reading this notebook of hers one night that she let me read. And I start looking at all this different stories she's written. And I noticed like she hasn't written stories in a while, probably years. So I asked her like, why did you stop? And she wasn't really sure. She, it was just something that she stopped doing for a couple of years. And as she got older, she just didn't pick it back up. So, and this was somebody who was really, really pushing me to do stand up. I had like two or three, there were, there were, there's been a lot of people who mentioned it to me, but I was always like, no, my jokes aren't going to work on stage just because I can make you guys laugh. Doesn't mean I can make strangers laugh. And you know, there were two or three people that kept pushing me to do it anyway. And I finally tell her, because she was one of them, I was like, okay, if you start writing stories again, I'll give stand-up a try. So the next day, she showed me like two or three things she'd written down that night, and my reaction was, fuck, I really have to do this now? <laughs> wow. So I, you know, start reaching out to different people, try to see if I could find a show, and one booker was willing to give me 10 minutes, which I did not realize how long 10 minutes was going to be when I, you know, first got the show. But, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, and I've explained this on my show before, 10 minutes when you're first starting out is an eternity. So, you know, it was an experience. I came into it with, you know, good energy. And I think because of that, it was better than it had any right to be. You know, I think, you know, the idea that I had for the set was very good. It's something that, you know, I haven't used to this day because I never really formatted it properly. And I realized that after the show, <laughs> but you. you know, I, I, I ended up enjoying it. So I went back, you know, again to see if I would do well, did a couple open mics in Philly that I got to, you know, experience what bombing was like at, and I haven't been back to Philly since actually. <laughs> You know, I had fun, you know, it led me on a journey that I never thought it would take me on. And, you know, I'm grateful for it. How many minutes of comedy do you have that's tight material? Tight? Um, or relatively I, tight? I think tight wise, I do like to mix crowd work into a lot of my sets. So 
I don't know if I could call this tight, but I have yeah. I have a comfortable twenty. Wonderful. So I have you, a couple. You will accept I, you'll accept bookings from anywhere as long as they make it worth your while to travel and stay in a hotel. Yeah, you know, as long as as long as you know. Obviously, if I'm going like more than I would say like four to six hours, you know, I may need something, you know, even if it's just, you know, like a simple $50 for like hosting or, you know, a feature spot or whatever. But, you know, I've I've gone to Connecticut for four hours and gotten nothing. I've actually gone there and then me and Abby were like, holy shit, impractical jokers are coming. So... I ended up spending a lot more money than I was supposed to and got nothing back for it. But uh, that show, we, that show, we had a fun time. I mean, it was just coincidence that they happened to be performing in the Mohegan Sun Arena the next day. So, you know, we did some stuff in Connecticut. We got breakfast, you know, hung out by a lake for a little while. You know, you know, cutesy couple shit that makes some people want to puke. We did that for like an hour. And after that, we went to an arcade and then went to the show and then got back home, you know, three o'clock that morning. So, so is, I ended Abby, up is Abby in the same house with you right now? Yeah, she came in a little while ago. I can tell her to say hi. I'd like to have her pop her little face into the camera. <laughs> hey, babe. <laughs> the TV's on, so I know she's here. <laughs> I I almost I almost want to call her because I don't want to like walk away from the camera because you know I don't want you to like be waiting for that to like see if it'll work. I'm calling her right now. I'll see if she'll pick up. Okay. Hopefully she does, or we're both gonna look like a couple of fools on Facebook Live. She may not want to get on screen. That's the beauty of a live show, right? Yes, absolutely. You're used to this. Oh yeah. No, I've. I've done a lot of different things on the round table over the years. Cause I started it back in 2017, you know, before I even started doing comedy, but you know, I remember I threw a surprise party on the show one time for somebody, you know, we were shooting, we were shooting silly string at this girl, you know, you know, popping like, you know, the confetti things that they sell at party city. You know, we, 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 there was like 10 of us that had a cake on the air. I mean, uh -huh. I think, I played Cards Against Humanity on the show. No way. Oh yeah, no, it was, it was a lot of fun. This is this was back when it was still in its early days, and I didn't understand that you know I was gonna have to get guests and network a lot more than I was doing. You know, because when I was doing radio in college, it was just me and a couple other co-hosts. You know, talking about you know superhero, anime, nerdy stuff. Yeah. So. And I mean, we would have guests on every now and then, but you know that we didn't mainly do that. We just wanted to be able to put a show together. So, I mean, in college I learned that, but you know, it was not until outside of college that I really learned how much I was going to have to network. Wow. And so how long have you been doing your, um, show podcast on the round table? Yes. Thank you. July of 2017 is when I started. So it's been four years and some change. It's been a while. What's your favorite part of round table? Of the round table, just being able to shoot the breeze with somebody for an hour, a lot like this, yeah, you know, right. I don't know where the conversation is going to go beforehand. And I may have, you know, a few questions prepared, especially when, you know, I get somebody who's a little bit more well-known, especially when, you know, I go into sports because, you know, a lot of the sports interviews, you know, they want you to have stuff prepared. They have things they want to talk about and stuff like that. I'm going to interrupt this question one second because Abby's calling me back. Okay, I'll take over. Hey, the TV's on. Are you home? He's asking his girlfriend yeah. to walk in the room. Yeah, so <laughs> Linda wants to say hi to you during the show. Are you coming? I, I'm, I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> well, then, you know, you're only going to be seen from the neck up, so. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with you coming. You don't have to. Are you, or are you sick of her editing your videos? Is that it? <laughs> no. I've been, I've been making jokes about that all show, so you can say yes. <laughs> How am I a jerk? She's laughing. You can't hear her? You know, she did, she did, she did say, you know, if she, 
you know, tries <laughs> to pop out a smile to see if somebody will stop. I, I think, you know, I'm not that guy. <laughs> That guy, pal, you're not that guy. Exactly. <laughs> Hi, Abby. Hi. All right, I can hear. I can hear. It sounds like she's coming. Oh yay! All right. Oh shit! I locked the door. Hold on. <laughs> I get used to locking the door when I do my show, so I apologize. Hi hey there, Abby. <laughs> so How nice are you? <laughs> Wonderful, thanks. So I'm so glad <laughs> to see you. He's been telling people how you're editing my videos and, <laughs> and then they get stuck and you're like, shit. <laughs> I kissed your ear for a second. That was kind of weird. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just got home from a long day of work. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh my God. <laughs> Our cat's curious as to what's going on now. Both of them are. <laughs> I well, might pick one of them up. They'll hate it, but it's fine. They'll love me in like five minutes. Abby is the reason you can see any of the videos on YouTube. So thank you so much, Abby. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. You're what's welcome. Your, what's your What's your cat's name? Uh, that one that was just on camera, Silver. Our other one, his name is Thor. He's a big fatty. Wow. Yeah, hold on. She's she's getting them right now. See, see, look at how fat he is. Aww, he's got he's the adorable. body of Chris Hemsworth in Endgame. Aww, he's adorable. He looks so healthy. <laughs> he is now. He's happy. Yeah, so. yeah, it's, it's okay, Thor. I'm fat and happy, too. We can do this. I tell people, Abby, that if I was editing my own videos, you would probably see them on camera, too, at 7-Eleven. <laughs> Babe, am I holding him right this time? No. For once? I didn't think so. No. All right. I kind of knew it. All right. Well, I kind of have to wrap it up. I have one. I know. Time. And then you should come on to Gladys Simon's parties on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. I can send you an invite so you can try to come on and watch and see if you want to be on the show. It's quite I'm always. I'm always down to come on a show. So I, I, I definitely would be happy to watch it at some point. She, so, runs, she, feel free. she runs Comic Strip Live Gladys Room on Thursdays at Comic Strip Live. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm always down to do anybody's show. I'm not, you know, somebody who's thrown Zoom shows out, you know, just because, you know, we can do live shows again. So, Perfect. you know, I'm happy to do it. I'll, I'll let you know the codes to get on her Zoom show on Wednesdays at 5 o'clock so you can get to know her. All right. Yeah. So, no, that sounds good to me. So tell people where you're going to be performing in the next week or so, please. Okay. So I have a show this Sunday over at Bushwick Public House in Brooklyn, New York at around 7 o'clock. I'm hoping you guys can make it. It's a really, really cool venue. You know, they have a nice little bar upstairs. The show will be downstairs. And it's kind of, you know, like this punk rock emo type of setup. So... You know, it's it's a very fun place to do comedy, and the crowds usually there are a lot of fun. So come join us. You'll have fun. Wonderful. And tell people where they can follow you. You're on where they can watch your show, your website, your where you're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Okay. You can watch John. You can watch the roundtable live on my Facebook under John Brecco. You know. Like John Brecco Media, I put up a lot of content and info about shows I do, both radio and comedy on there. And you can follow me on Instagram at John A. Brecco 395. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on. I really enjoyed getting to know you. You're kind of like the son I wish I would have had. <laughs> Thank you. I wish my mom felt the same way, but I decided to do comedy. She well, wanted me to be a talent. <laughs> <laughs> you got Abby, so that's good. She's a doll and you're a doll. So thank you so much for coming on. This is John Greco, you guys. You got to know him. You got to love him. Now follow him and help his career. Thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, John Greco. Thank you. Have a good one, okay? Bye, you too. Bye.